morning guys okay so this little guy he's uh, not been too well he's got a bit of an eye infection and uh, also uh, we've, we've, we're treating that now but I've also noticed while I was treating that that his beak is really long so what we need to do is uh, we need to trim this beak down we're just going to use a normal pair of toenail clippers but what we need to do we need to get his head between our fingers like this and then we want to bring the clippers just up to the bottom of the beak and clip it off so we're going to do a bit more there we are so he's no worse for wear um, and now he's got a nice flat beak he's gonna have no problems eating or anything he's got a bit of a swollen eye so we need to keep giving him antibiotics for this and clean that up he's obviously got involved in a fight with something else or another cockerel or maybe or something and it's uh, put an infection in his eye so we're gonna get that treated but at least now he's not gonna have no problem eating so we're gonna put him down and let him go There we are, and he's off with no, no issues at all, and he's actually gone over and started eating. Okay, so as some of you are aware, um, the other day we uh, we planted some uh, cucumber seeds, you know, also cucumbers and things like that. And um, a mouse got in the polytunnel and basically ate the lot. It ate all our cucumbers, all our pumpkins, courgettes, sweet corn. It really done a number on us. So uh, today I'm going to be planting a few more. Um, what we have here. Um, are just two market more seeds that's all I've got left in this packet and uh, we're gonna get plant them on side so it's just a case of push them down about two to three times their depth and just cover them over don't forget when you're planting these things to write a label for them now obviously I had labels here there's a market more one so I'm gonna stick that in there and it's just as simple as that so um, here guys I've got um, some marrow seed and they came from Dan from the allotment diary and uh, this year I'm going to have a go at growing a giant marrow now he's marked the weight of the marrow so obviously I'm going to pick the biggest ones and he's got two 65 pounders here so I'm going to put two of these in and I'm going to pick the best plant, okay? He's actually wrote, um, he's actually wrote on the seed. I don't know if you guys can make this out, but he's wrote on the seed 65. So um, we're going to put these in here again, on side about two times the depth of the seed. And then just cover them over. We're going to write a few more labels. And... Also, um, we're going to see how these go, and we're going to plant these in the in an area between the um, between the beans this year. So hopefully, it should be good. Um, so, so I'm going to put it. I'm going to name them Dan's Marrow. And uh, we'll see how we'll crack on with those, and hopefully. We'll get something out of there that's uh, worth having. Dan's marrow. What we'll do, we'll pick the best one of these. Um, if there's a frost, um, if there's a frost sort of uh, forecast, we'll uh, come down, we'll cover them over and things like that if it went once they're up, you know. Um, so I'm going to get on with doing these and uh, and we'll come back to you in a little while.
Okay, so at this main bed, this is where um, Wurzel comes. And uh, as you can see already, there's a lot of weed seeds starting to germinate. And that's because uh, this weather where it's damp but quite warm and humid, um, they flourish. So uh, it's really important to keep the hole going at this sort of time. We're gonna have a relatively warm day today. So it's a perfect time to do it because when it's dry and warm, these seeds will dry out and they won't have a chance to uh, to repopulate. It's a really good idea to keep your hoe nice and sharp. Um, that way it'll just skip through. And, uh, and it's just a case of a couple of minutes like this doing a bed will save you hours and hours and hours reweeding. So once it's weeded, just stay on top of it guys for the sake of a couple of minutes just just hoeing a bed over and like I said it's no biggie just just hoe it over and uh, and leave the seeds where they are because they're only tiny little things at the moment you need to be doing this in the main growing season around every six to eight days because um, if you don't they'll get established and that'll be the end of you and the last thing you want to do is leave these things get big enough where they go to seed because if they go to seed you're then looking at the next seven years then pulling seeds from uh you know from the, the weed seeds you know so uh it's really important to to do this and for the sake like i said i could probably do all the beds on the plot in around about half an hour like this maybe so it doesn't take long um Whereas weeding them, especially as they start to get going, will take hours and hours and hours. So it's a quick weed. You can still see the weed seeds on top, but now they've been cut. Because if you've got a nice sharp hoe, and I always suggest like getting a blade and sharpening, you know, getting a stone and sharpening the end of your blade, it'll actually, rather than just uprooting them, it cuts the tops off. And that's what will uh, what will kill them. So we need to be doing this now for every single bed. And later on today, when the sun excuse me, crossing the camera. Later on today, when the sun uh, comes in, you'll uh, see them all dried out and what have you. If you get any little bits of cooch grass or anything, just like this, just make sure you pull them out. Other than that, guys, um, a little bit bigger and a little bit there. Here we are. So, um, other than that, you know, you haven't got to worry about them. It's just a case of just getting on it. it. takes two seconds. But once you've got your bed sorted, keep it sorted, guys. Don't, don't let these weed seeds take back over. Okay, so as you can see here, I've just planted out um, some cabbage and uh, kales and things like that in three of the beds here. And the reason being is they're just getting too hot in the polytunnel. So uh, they had to get out, they get to, you know, to a right, right to old size as well. Like anything else when you plant it out, they have been hardened off a bit, but they're still wilting. Um, it's quite warm, but, uh, you know, like I said, it's the best time now because it's still cloudy at the moment and uh, the sun is not going to be hammering down on them. So, uh, Hopefully they'll perk themselves back up. I put some slug pellets down as well because um, I put some red cabbage. Let's see if I can just over in that bed there the other day, and the slugs hammered a load of the leaves on them. So uh, I've um, I've put a few slug pellets down. I don't like using them, but you know I'd rather keep my cabbage than uh, than that. Um, there are other methods, like I said, we've got a pond in place now, so hopefully we'll have some frogs very shortly and stuff, and they'll be helping us throughout the rest of the year. Um, but for now, while these plants are small and everything else, I'm going to have to use the pellet. Um, there are other things we can use, like beer traps and things like that, but at the moment, it's a, a quick fix, in effect. Um, same thing again now, I'm going to spin you around onto this bed. Same thing on this bed. Um, we've got some kale and uh, some other bits and bobs but again they start to flop a bit 
but they will come back and um, and they'll be okay uh, you know, look prime example there's a dead slug from last night so um, so the slug pellets do work and they didn't have any of my leaves so um, not the nicest of things to use but like I said needs must at the moment so I'll speak to you in a bit okay a little look at our onion and shallot bed as you can see the shallots are coming up really really well so um, and that's the same now right across the board so it's all looking good onions still doing well they're coming on um, got a little bit of uh, hoeing to do in between these as well and I put these um, with the spacing of a hoe in mind so uh, so we can do that um, this blackberry bush here looking fantastic too um, yeah there's a starting to sprout now so they, they're obviously taken as well but this one's looking really good so uh, I will speak to you in a moment so uh, I've had a, another small load of this bark chip uh, dropped off and this is the stuff that um, comes from that tree surgeon now the last lot we had was from a mate of his and it was a lot finer but his chipper does it uh, quite thickly now there's still a lot of leaf and stuff in here and a bit of grass and stuff but that's not a problem what we're going to do with this stuff today um, we've just spoken about the importance of um, of uh, getting rid of all the weed seeds and things like that and also uh, keeping our home moving but um, around things like the fruit bushes like the blueberries and the blackberries um, and even some of the red currants and stuff like that I think I'm going to use this as a mulch um, I'm just going to put it on the on the thing it'll do a couple of things it'll help keep moisture down so it'll conserve water because as you were aware everything we use on this plot we have to ca uh, catch so um, and, and obviously contain that so um, the less we have to use the better especially in the summer um, it'll help prevent that soil from forming that massive crust and, and things like that so I think what we'll do we'll put a layer of this down around the um, the uh, blueberries the blackberries and the uh, red and black uh, red and black currants um, if we've got enough of it and uh, we want a, a good layer probably around about um, four to six inches deep um, and that should then block out most of the weeds from from growing in them beds and it'll help to uh, help us to maintain the plot because obviously as things progress now um, these weeds are going to get a lot more um, active and they're going to you know they're going to start taking over if something happens like it did last year with my back or something like that so anything I can do to, to prevent that is better it's not the nicest of stuff um, but um, it's going to do a job and eventually these leaves will all die and it'll all go brown and and eventually all look like a mulch anyway and uh, because they're permanent um because they're a permanent crop we're not going to have to worry about digging it in so we aren't going to worry about it robbing the nitrogen out of the soil so um and if we need to plant anything else there or whatever the case being we can just move it out of the way plant and then put it back so um so that's what we're going to do now and uh, i'll uh, i'll show you what it's like when it's done but before that, I'll give you a quick look at the uh, the beds that we've done already. Okay, so as you can see here, we have our primer and flora canes, um, and this bed has all been hoed, so it goes rid of the weed seeds. We have the blueberries here, um, and again, that's all been hoed the blackberries further down and just behind it we have all the black currant bushes and things like that we're not expecting huge amounts this year off them because we split them down because they were old trees and things like that but again we've hoed that so we're going to get some of these beds covered with some of this mulch and hopefully it'll make a bit of a difference for us as uh, time goes on um, so I'll see you in a moment so as you can see we've done the blackberry bed doesn't look a lot now because obviously you can't see much of the blackberries at the moment but um, 
they are there. Uh, let's see if I can get a better shot view. There they are, look there. So um, this will just help prevent any moisture loss. Excuse me thing about with my uh, microphone. Just dropped it on the floor. Uh, we've also done a fair bit of work up here. As you can see, all that compost and stuff that was all mounded there is now gone. So uh, it clears out the carbon post bins there, so we're able to get this end sorted out. I've put in the path right along now, so um, I'll continue that. And what we're going to do here, we're going to put another another small bed in around this area here, so um, uh, that'll help that. We've mulched all this bed as well which all the black currants are in again that'll help to prevent prevent uh, moisture loss and stop the weeds but if you remember last time we had the path running down but that little rhubarb was sticking out behind that tile well now that rhubarb is massive so what we've done we lifted the two the two um stones where the rhubarb were or was i should say and we've continued the bark trip around just to prevent um any further uh, mud and stuff like that excuse me banging around but as you can see this rhubarb is absolutely massive so that's what we've done um we've got the uh all the blueberry beds sorted as well so you know that's three big beds that we're not going to have to worry about with uh seed you know weed seeds and stuff like that now we haven't done the raspberries and the reason for that is we've got canes coming up through them and stuff like that and i don't want to uh create any issues for that and it's quick enough to to uh mo you know to moisturize anyway uh, moisturize excuse me what am i on about uh, quick enough to um uh to to sort of um hoe i don't know where they are i got moisturize from then um so really that's it now it's all starting to sort of come together we've just got this area here to finish digging over now I'm going to make a bit more of a start on that later, but I've got a few more tomatoes to pot on. And uh, we'll build that bed up there, and then we'll just a bit of bark chip then, just sort of down here to join up with this bark chip. And uh, this side of the plot is more or less done, and it's just a case of maintain, uh, maintenance and growing. What I may do for the, prime, uh, for the time being on the polytunnel, the old one there, I may just put some soil in and just grow in them beds and uh, and then later on in the year build a polytunnel ready for next year um, because it's going to be a bit late to do anything with it now so we'll see um, and then we'll bark chip all around the shed and stuff there but you know the plot is starting to come on now so all of the uh, work that we've been doing is, uh, is starting to really pay off so uh, that's it for the moment I'll come back to you in a bit Right, so it's time that uh, Wurzel was put in his pride of place. And that is right right here. Caitlin, can you bring Dad the keys, babe? Hang on a minute. I've got to find his, his bolt. And uh, and then we'll lock him in. There we are. Thanks, babe. So we're gonna just stick the lock through here. And the reason we lock him up, guys, is because uh, obviously you know what the problems with theft and stuff around here are, and it's the same on any allotment, really. So we just lock him up just to make sure. Uh, bring him a bit closer. And now we need to push him down now. Mommy. And Mommy. 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 here we are. He's locked in place. He can't go anywhere. Go on off you get then, babe. So spring is officially sprung. Wurzel's in his pride of place. We'll just spin him around. What's on your belly? Oh, oh, we broke it. Whoops, the baby. Broke it. So that just showed that it rotted, didn't it? Yeah. That's fine. No, we'll put a new one up for him. Here we go. So that's it. Wurzel is up. I have a spider bag for his pocket. 
You are? Where's the bird bird pocket? I don't know, love. Here we are. Daddy, what's that on your belly? Look at him, he's all split and everything. He needs a bit of fixing, doesn't he? Daddy, what's that on your belly? That's a microphone, babe. Do you, want to take that, do you want to take that up there for me by the by the edge of the shed? Thank you. So that's it. Gardening season's officially sprung and uh, Wurzel's now on the plot. So uh, he's going to do a bit of work now. Any luck, we'll get some help. Anyway, thanks guys and I'll see you soon. We've uh, cleared this section off. Okay. And... Um, we're going to get in one of our bean trenches and uh, you need a good strong frame for beans and people make wigwams out of beans, canes and they'll also make, uh, they'll put um, bean kings at like an A-frame and then put another bean cane across the top of them. So um, we're not going to do it that way. We use some scaffolding poles, head down into the ground, nice big strong scaffolding pole across the top so it's a really strong frame before we even start. It's, uh, it does move a little bit, but the time the bean canes are on it, you know, it's ideal. So that's what we're going to be doing now today. And uh, all I'm doing here is just trying to snap the cable that's around them, because I don't have any scissors. Bear with me one second. Here we are. Okay. Hopefully, no, I haven't put this, left this too high, but it's just a case of leaving the bean cane, sticking it in the ground. Same thing on this side. And now they will get tied together at the top. And um, we, we just uh, continue down the line every sort of few feet if it's a bit hard there's obviously a stone or something there so here we go just push it and these beans will have about six and a half feet to the top of their height so um it's not a bad height and we're hoping for some good beans on these this year um these this uh row is going to be for our um, French climbing beans so uh, so all you do you work along the row sticking them in and we'll uh, once we've got enough or once we've got you know once we've done enough of them that one's a bit short, so we'll stick him on the side. We've got plenty of new ones, but for now, we're using these older ones. And we will put one bean per pole. I know some people put two and three beans a pole. We did that last year, and uh, we had good success with it. But the year before, I only put one per pole, and it seemed to work a lot better. So, so I'm not going to teach you guys how to suck eggs. As you can see, this is all we do. We put them in, we tie them at the top. But I'm sure you'll agree that gives a very strong frame that's going to be more than capable of holding up all the beans and everything else that are on there. We'll prepare this now. We'll dig some compost and um, some manure and stuff like that, well rotted manure and things into it, um, just to enrich it a little bit. And uh, that'll be this bed here. Down here, I was going to put another one down where, roughly where the camera is, uh, another bean uh, row. But what we've decided to do this year is we've decided to use the place where the old polytunnel is. Give me a second, I'll turn you now. Okay. So we're going to use one of them beds and we're going to run one big long one across there. And that's going to be for all our, um, for our runner beans. Um, we've got some other beans going in as well. Sco you'll have to excuse Caitlin shouting. Um, there she is over there. But um, <laughs> see what I have to do. 
see what I have to put up with. <laughs> um, yeah, so, um, so anyway, we will be using this area here and uh, <laughs> Wayne's decided to join in now. He's just down by the shed there, look. Um, yeah, so we're going to be uh, using that area for the next Bean King. But this one here, this is just designed, it's very strong and uh, and of course it's going to give plenty of strength for the beans and everything else. So uh, uh, I think that's going to be about it for today's episode guys. Um, as you can see there's a lot of work being done and it's a long video I appreciate. Um, and uh, I'm sure there'll be a few more bits I'll, I'll need to add to it the time this li uh, goes live. Anyway, thanks and I'll speak to you soon. Well, it's come to that time, guys. Um, I just uh, need to thank a load of you. Oh, in fact, I need to thank all of you. Um, we've hit a thousand subscribers. In fact, um, yeah, last night um, I meant to put this video on, and uh, while editing it, my computer crashed, and like a div, I didn't save any of the work, so I've got to re edit it again today. Um, so at the time of editing now, um, we've got actually got a thousand and nine subscribers. So firstly, I want to thank every single one of you for subscribing. Okay, and uh, you know it's a big deal for me because obviously, you know, a thousand is like a bit of a landmark when it comes to subscribers and everything else. But also, it means that obviously what I'm doing, I must be doing something right for you guys to keep watching, um, and that you know that that's good for me. Um, so uh, what I'm going to do is, as I discussed before in one of our other videos, we're going to uh, run, um, we're going to run a, a little bit of a competition, and it's going to be open to all 1,009 of you. Okay, anybody now who subscribes after this uh, video goes live. Okay, so basically, the, uh, anybody now, the one thousandth and tenth person won't be eligible, but all 1009 of you are eligible now to enter this competition okay it's nothing major guys but it's just like a little thank you um in an earlier video i described um that we were going to be hiding a little plastic duckling in one of the videos and um and what we need from you guys if you want to enter is we need the actual name of the video the um uh, timestamp for that video okay and roughly you know where in the video it is so so we need those three you know those three things um, and that needs to be put in a post in this video okay so uh, in fact don't do it in this video send me um, a private mail or, or, or something like that you know uh, a message via YouTube um, so that uh, otherwise you're giving everybody else the answer so uh, send me a private message on YouTube um, also, the other reason behind that is we don't want everybody knowing that we're running this competition. I don't want people joining, as we've discussed and Brendan's discussed and a few others, um, you know, like uh, Dan and what have you, um, uh, Dale. We don't want to be um, just having the trolls signing up for the sake of it. At the end of the day, I'm thanking you guys for signing up and, and viewing me, so I'd rather one of you get the, 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 the prizes. And like I said, it's not a lot. Um, we've spoken about um, these quite a lot over the last few weeks. Okay, these are the Jiffy Sevens. Now I buy them, um, you know, I buy them in in a big box. Okay, and um, they there's 720 came in this box. And what I'm going to do for the first price, these these are I'm going to talk talk to you a little bit about them first. These are brilliant for your high value things now you will be planting stuff on i know we're a little late unfortunately i, c I don't dictate when we hit a thousand um a thousand subscribers so so this is the way it is but they'll always come in handy for next year because they're dried and it's all compressed and everything else they can just keep so we've got two prizes okay we're going to do a first and second prize and we'll do three prizes actually we'll do first second and third prize first prize 
is going to be a hundred of these okay so it's going to be free shipping and everything all you need to do is uh tell me and uh and the, the, the person who wins first prize is going to get a hundred of these jiffy sevens and uh, they can be used for pretty much any seeds you want to but they're best kept for high value seeds the second prize will be 50 of them okay and again shipping will be free and the third prize we'll do 25 of these or we will um do the um sorry no what we'll do we'll um use the we've got some you guys know what i i um i grow some of the hot chilies and stuff like that the five hottest of the world now those chili seeds are very very expensive if you look online um for like six to eight seeds you're looking at around about 10 or 12 pounds um they're not cheap seeds um what i'm going to do i'm going to um put for the third prize or second slash third prize i'm going to put um two each of those hot five seeds um into a bag you know into the envelopes and into a bag and um so that'll be the third prize it'll be a total of 10 seeds um of the five hottest chilies in the world um maybe a little late now to plant them this year unless you've got somewhere really warm you can bring them on quickly however um hot chili seeds will keep fine till next year so you can use them again so um so first prize is going to be 100 of these second prize will be 50 of these and the third prize is going to be those 10 chili seeds okay so we know what we've got to do um and basically the rules behind it guys are you've got to be uh one of the 1009 people that are already subscribed you've got to find that duck and there's no multiple entries or anything okay only one entry per person and what we will do we will everybody who's entered we will write down their name in a list with a number and we'll go to random.org and we'll generate the numbers it's the fairest way of doing it and um and hopefully um you know you guys will win these and i'll get them off in a post and just as soon as i can um i don't know if some of you are aware we're, we're in the middle of striking and stuff at the moment in the fire service um so we've got um you know quite a lot on our plates so while that's going on i may not get them straight out to you it might be in the next week or two okay but the um the uh competition i'm going to leave running anyway until the fifth no the 14th of this month so you've got basically two weeks okay it's the second of may now and we'll run it for sort of uh 12 days so the 14th 12 o'clock p.m will be the last one to do and we'll draw it on the 15th and uh, again the draw um uh will uh be a separate video it'll only be a quick video just to show you who's won and and obviously what i'll expect then is for you guys to send me an email um with your contact details or you know your your postal details things like that so if you want to uh, get involved with this all you got to do is find that deck give me the name of the program the timestamp and roughly where on the screen it is and uh and put that in a message to me don't put it in the notes below because obviously everybody's going to know and also we don't want the trolls getting involved in this if we can help it um it will just save life a, you know make life a little easier for me um so with that being said guys that's the end of this video it's i know it's been a long video and uh i hope you've been through it uh for those who are those of you that have got you know, seen all the way through the video then obviously you'll you will have found out about the competition um, once again i want to thank everybody for uh, subscribing and for viewing my channel and staying with me and hopefully you'll continue to do so throughout the um throughout the season one last thing before i go um a couple of things up the allotment are going to be put on hold for a little while obviously we still need to do everything else um i've been asked by my mother to build her a shed and to revamp her pond and uh her sort of plant area rockery around the pond um i'll be doing that towards the end of this month now you're still going to get allotment videos and everything else so don't worry about that um however um there was also going to be these uh videos i'm going to uh, do a, a series on on the shed build because it's going to be quite a substantial shed and um, also I'm going to do a, a series on revamping that pond as well so um, hopefully they'll be of interest to you guys as well so anyway without further ado hope you have a great day and um, I will see you in the next video
Cheers, guys.